The Siege of Baylor, from July 1, 1898 to June 2, 1899, was a battle of the Philippine Revolution and concurrently the Spanish-American War and the Philippine-American War. Filipino revolutionaries laid siege to a fortified church manned by colonial Spanish troops in the town of Baylor, Philippines for 11 months, or 337 days. The battle is considered part of the Spanish-American War since the Filipinos were allied with the United States at the outset. That war ended in December 1898 with Spain's surrender and annexation of the Philippines to the United States. However, cut off from communications with their own government and military, the Spanish forces continued their defense against the Filipino forces until 1899. Background Baylor, Aurora located on the eastern coast of Luzon, is some 225 kilometers distant from the Philippine capital city of Manila. The Philippine Revolution against Spanish colonial rule started 1896. The Spanish garrison Baylor, in Sept. 1897, with 50 cazadores under L.T. Jose Mota, to prevent Aguinaldo from receiving smuggled arms. Mota's forces were attacked on the night of 4 October, by Novicio's men, killing L.T. Mota and six other Spaniards, wounding several and capturing 30 Mauser rifles. The initial phase of the Philippine Revolution ended with the truce in 1897. By 1898, with the resumption of the Philippine Revolution, Baylor was still reachable only by ship or by traversing on foot through nearly impassable jungle trails across the Sierra Madres, that were often washed out by torrential tropical rains. During this phase of the revolution, the Philippines was involved in the Spanish-American War, and the Filipino rebels allied themselves with the American forces. This alliance would end with the outbreak of the Philippine-American War in 1899. Baylor was garrisoned by a 50-man detachment of the 2nd Expeditionary Battalion Cazadores, of Philippines, under Captain Don Enrique de las Morinas y Fossa, as the Principe District's political military governor. On June 1, 1898, Morinas began work to dig a well stock food supplies and ammunition and to fortify the church compound of San Luis de Tolosa in Ballas Town Square against a possible attack. The church was the only stone building in the area. Siege. On June 26, it was noticed that the town residents were leaving. On the night of the 30th, 800 Filipino troops under Teodori Poluna attacked, and the garrison fell back to the church. The town priest, Candido Gomez Carreno, also courted himself in the church. The first few days of the siege saw several attempts by the Filipinos to get the Spanish to surrender by leaving letters, while they surrounded the church with trenches. On July 8 the revolutionary commander, then Cirilo Gomez Ortiz, offered a suspension of hostilities until nightfall, which was accepted. On July 18, Calixto Villacorta took command of the Filipinos. He also sent a warning letter, which was rebuffed. The Spanish had to endure confinement in a small, hot, humid space. As the siege progressed, their food supply began to diminish through usage and spoilage. Enemy rifle fire did cause casualties but diseases such as beriberi, dysentery and fevers did more damage. The first Spaniard to die was Gomez Carreno. In September, LT, Alonso, and then in November, Captain Las Morinas succumbed to beriberi. Command fell to LT. Saturnino Martin Cerezo when Las Morinas died in December. More than once the Spanish made forays to burn nearby houses to deprive the Filipinos of much needed cover. The Filipinos attempted to smoke them out by setting fires beside the church wall but this was repulsed and their timber captured. At the start of the siege, the Spanish had provisions of flour, rice, beans, chickpeas, bacon, canned Australian beef, sardines, wine, sugar, and coffee, but no salt. Supplementing their food supplies, the Spanish foraged for pumpkins, pumpkin leaves, oranges, plant and shoots, various herbs, and planted a garden of peppers, tomatoes and pumpkins. 
by mid-November, having failed to dislodge the Spanish defenders, Villacorta, under a flag of truce, left newspapers on the church steps that told of Spain's planned departure from the Philippines and that the Spanish-American conflict was over. Martin considered this a ruse. Next Villacorta brought in Spanish civilians and ultimately a uniformed Spanish officer left behind to wrap up Spain's affairs on the island, to no avail. By the 22nd of November, 1898, 145 days had elapsed since the siege began, during which 14 Spanish soldiers died of disease. Of the 38 remaining troops, only 23 were effective, with the rest being sick. The Filipinos also had suffered casualties, mostly from Mauser rifle fire the Spanish were able to inflict on them from their protected firing positions. Gomez Ortiz was one of these. The new year brought more Spanish emissaries to Baylor but again Martin Cerezo turned them away. At the end of February, the Spanish killed three water buffaloes, eating the meat before it spoiled, and using the leather for footwear. In April, the Americans intervened when Commander Charles S. Sperry, commanding the US Yorktown, attempted to rescue the Spanish. By this time, the Philippines had been at war with the United States since February. On a reconnaissance mission, five Americans were killed, while L.T. Gilmore and nine others were captured and held prisoner by the Filipinos until rescued in December. When the food ran out on 24 April, the Spanish resorted to eating stray dogs, cats, reptiles, snails and crows. On 8 May, Filipino artillery shelling hit an improvised cell that held three Spaniards who had attempted to desert earlier in the siege. One of them, Alcide Bayona, ran out and joined the Filipinos. This was a blow to the Spanish as the deserter had important intelligence to share about their dire straits, and helped fire the cannon on the church to good effect. On May 28, 1899, there was yet another attempt to get Martin Cerezo to surrender. Again, another Spanish officer, Lieutenant Colonel Cristobal Aguilar y Castaneda, appeared under a flag of truce and was turned away. He had brought recent Spanish newspapers, which Cerezo initially dismissed as bogus until Martin read an article concerning a close friend's posting, plans of which only he knew, convincing him the newspapers were genuine and that indeed Spain had lost the war. On June 2, 1899, Martin surrendered to the Filipinos. General Emilio Aguinaldo, president of the Philippine Revolutionary Government, First Philippine Republic, decreed that they were to be considered not as prisoners of war but as friends. He further stated that they realized an epic as glorious as the legendary valor of the son of El Cid and Apolio. Three months later, on September 1st, the survivors, including Martin Cerezo, arrived in Barcelona where they were received and honored as heroes. Martin Cerezo later published a memoir, El Sitio de Bela, where he gave his reasons for holding out. It would be somewhat difficult for me to explain, principally, I believe through mistrust and obstinacy. Then also on account of a certain kind of auto-suggestion that we ought not for any reason surrender because of national enthusiasm, without doubt influenced by the attractive illusion of glory and on account of the suffering and treasury of sacrifice and heroism and that by surrender, we would be putting an unworthy end to it all, aftermath. The two Franciscan priests, Felix Minaya and Juan Lopez, plus the Yorktown seaman George Arthur Venville, were kept as prisoners by Novicio, until the priests were rescued by the Americans on 3 June 1900, having re-garrisoned Baylor earlier that year. Venville however was led to his death by the hands of Ilongots before the American arrival. Furthermore, Novicio was put on trial for ordering the Yorktown Sailor or a B. MacDonald buried alive after the ambush. Found guilty, Novicio faced a life sentence of hard labor in Bilibid prison. Las Morinas was posthumously promoted to major and awarded the La Rate Cross of San Fernando, Spain's highest military medal.
His widow received a pension of 5,000 pesetas or pesos. Martin Serrazo was promoted to major with an annual pension of 1,000 pesetas. He also was decorated with the Royal Cross as well as the Military Order of San Fernando and went on to become a Major General. He died in 1948. Lt. Zayas received a posthumous promotion. The enlisted men received the Silver Cross of Military Merit, and each of them received a monthly pension of 60 pesetas. Of the 50 men who entered the church, around 30 survived the 11-month siege. Fourteen men died from disease. Only two men died from wounds. There were four deserters from the garrison. Two men were imprisoned for helping in the desertion of another, and executed on orders of Martin Cerezo on June 1, 1899, the day before the surrender. The feat of the Spanish so inspired the American general Frederick Funston that he had Martin Cerezo's memoir translated and gave copies to all his offices. It was published his under the red and gold being notes and recollections of the siege of Baylor. The survivors were known as the last ones of the Philippines. A century after their return, the modern-day Spanish government paid homage to them. Baylor in popular culture. The siege of Baylor is portrayed in the 1945 Spanish film Los Altamor de Filipinas, and in the 2008 Filipino film Baylor.